While incarcerated, some inmates unleash a whirlwind of mind-bending acts that defy all expectations. And sometimes these acts get caught on camera, giving us a glimpse into the dangerous reality of what really goes on behind the walls of a prison. Here are some of the craziest prison moments caught on camera. Flavino da Silva now, the case we're going to talk about right now might just stick with you for the rest of your life due to its sheer ridiculousness. The person you see in this horrific video is not a little girl. I mean, it's clearly obvious. It's actually the Brazilian drug lord, Clavino da Silva, dressed up as his little daughter to escape his 73-year prison sentence. Mr. da Silva, known as Shorty, was serving a 73-year sentence for his involvement in the Red Command drug trafficking faction in Brazil. January 2013, he would take inspiration from his namesake, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, by joining 31 other inmates to tunnel out the Rio de Janeiro State Penitentiary prison complex through the sewers. Four dirt-covered inmates were immediately recaptured, but Silva made it out alongside other gang members nicknamed Fish, Spider-Man, and Sledgehammer. We really don't know where they got those names from, we're just as confused, but even more ridiculous was De Silva's actions after his recapture. The following month, he was rearrested while attempting to seize control of a shantytown in Rio's western districts with a group of heavily armed men. For this, he was given up to an additional 25 years in prison, and it was at that point that De Silva conceived the idea to dress up as his 19-year-old daughter with a completely absurd and low-budget costume. De Silva put on the costume and headed towards the entrance, aiming to be let out as a visitor. However, officials spotted this silly silicon mask he had on and immediately apprehended him. Footage released by the administration secretariat showed Mr. De Silva after being discovered by the guards. In it, he wore a mask, glasses, a long black wig, jeans, and a pink t-shirt with donuts on it. He then removed the disguise piece by piece before finally peeling off the mask with some effort. Mr. De Silva, with a shaved head and tattooed arms, is then asked to identify himself. He replies by saying his full name. This footage went viral on YouTube, with users comparing it to the lowbrow Hollywood comedy White Chicks where two feds awkwardly pretend to be clueless white socialites. But the real plot twist to this story is, three days after this foiled escape plan, Flavino da Silva took his own life. His lifeless body was found in a cell hanging from the ceiling using bed sheets. Many say da Silva wanted to escape from his prison sentence so bad that he resorted to taking his own life. And although da Silva's death marked a tragic conclusion to his life, it did shed light on Brazil's prison system prompting criticism of its officials for their failure to securely manage prisoners. El Chapo We'll talk about it a million more times because this has to be the most meticulously planned and flawlessly executed prison escapes of our time. Precision, timing, and execution are remarkable and worthy of record books. But only a man as cunning and as witty as Joaquin El Chapo Guzman could have orchestrated such a masterpiece. July 11, 2015 El Chapo escaped from the Federal Social Readaptation Center No. 1, a max security prison in Mexico. He was last seen by security cameras at 852 near the shower area. This place was the only part of his cell that wasn't visible to the security cameras, and Guzman knew to capitalize on it. As you can see, Guzman paced up and down his cell, seemingly distressed over something, and at some point he leans forward into the shower before returning to take a seat on his cell bunk. However, the next time he moves toward the shower area, he vanishes. After the guards didn't see him for 25 minutes on surveillance video, personnel went looking for him. When they got there, he was long gone. They found that he escaped through a tunnel leading from the shower area to a house construction site about 1.5 kilometers away in a Santa Juanita neighborhood. This tunnel was 30 feet deep underground, and Guzman used a ladder to climb to the bottom. The tunnel had a height about 1.7 meters and 30 inches in width perfectly built to the custom measurements of El Chapo's body. Even more fascinating was that this tunnel was equipped with artificial light, air ducts, and high-quality construction materials. When authorities went down to take a look, they found a motorcycle, which they figured was used to transport materials and possibly Guzman himself. But as extraordinary as this prison escape was, there's still a few questions that need to be answered. For instance, how is it possible that during the entire construction process of that tunnel, no prison guard was alerted by the noise. And why did it take over 25 minutes for his disappearance to be noticed? Malika Calhoun November 2018, Calhoun was arrested and held in a cell at the suburban SeaTac City Hall. She was brought in for auto theft investigation. However, one deputy assigned to the case 
31-year-old Paul Sheen, had a problem with her attitude. According to Paul, Malika was being stubborn toward him in the holding area, and when she was placed in the cell, he asked her to take off her shoes. Malika can be seen on the video kicking one leg of her shoe outside, but once she does that, Officer Paul launches towards her, pushing her back toward the wall. He then strongly backs that girl against the wall and slams her to the floor by grabbing her hair. A second deputy enters the holding cell, while Paul holds the girl face down to the floor. The video is showing Paul appearing to have hit Malika with his hands before lifting her up and leading her out of the cell. But here's the catch. Malika was never charged with any crime, so Officer Paul's attack on her was seen as an assault. Consequently, Paul Sheen was charged with fourth-degree assault, while the second officer shown in the video was a trainee at the time, so he wasn't charged with anything. Now, Paul pleaded not guilty to the charge and claimed that Malika assaulted him with her shoe and he launched at her to resist further assault. July 2010, the case was dropped after two trials led to a hung-up jury. A few months before, a jury was deadlocked 11-1 to 1 to convict, while a second jury was split 11-1 to 1 to acquit. And given that the two juries were unable to reach a unanimous verdict, prosecutors say they believed a third trial is unwarranted. Now, Paul's a free man. Christopher Lopez March 17, 2013 35-year-old Chris Lopez died at the San Carlos Correctional Facility in Pueblo, Colorado. He was suffering from hyponatremia, a condition that occurs when there's not enough sodium in the blood. But prison staff ignored his seizures and shackled him to a restraint chair, thinking he was intentionally being unresponsive. Now, according to a lawsuit filed by his mother to the state of Colorado, the condition he suffered from, hyponatremia, could have been caused by the psychotropic medication these officers forced him to take. And when his episode was triggered, they should have treated him with prompt medical care. But that's a story we'll go deep into in a moment. The incident was documented in six hours of video. Correction staff, including guards, nurses, and one mental health clinician, Cheryl Newmeister, can be heard talking, joking, and laughing while Lopez lay dying. Guards noticed a partially clothed Lopez lying on his stomach, arms under his chest, and face on the floor. And as you can see from the video, he was shaking horribly. A corrections officer identified as Jaime Gutierrez Gonzalez then spoke through a food tray slot in the door telling Lopez to come towards that door. Jaime then told Lopez that if he didn't cooperate, there would be a forced cell entrance, during which he would be pepper sprayed. More than an hour after they noticed Lopez on the floor, a six-member team assembled to mount a forced cell entrance. Before getting into that cell, they were told that gas would be used because of a lack of personnel. The guards entered that cell dressed in riot gear and dragged him out. They told him to stop resisting, even though visibly he wasn't resisting anything. They stripped him, they chained and cuffed him to a wheeled transport chair and pulled a black spit mask over his head. They left him in that chair, slumped forward with his trunk held to the chair by a chain around his belly. Sometime after 6 a.m., which was three hours into him experiencing his episode, his legs began to shake uncontrollably. While those chains rattled away, his entire body began to shake and convulse. His eyes would roll back into his head as he was getting into his seizure. Keep in mind that at this time, all the guards were seeing this, and still, no one was reasonable enough to take action. At the end of his seizure, he slumped over, leaning to the side, and began to snore loudly, which is evidence of grand mal seizure. It was at this point that they took him out of that chair, telling Lopez, maybe you'll be a little more comfortable, and then laid him on the floor, still in restraints. At about 9.10 a.m., after a second seizure, Lopez's body, which had been heaving with each breath, stopped moving as he died. His body lay on the floor, face down, his head inches from the cell toilet. And it wasn't until after about 15 minutes that personnel entered to check in on Chris and confirm him dead. Consequently, his family sued the state of Colorado for negligence, and they were settled with a whopping sum of $3 million. But is that enough to take away the pain of losing a family member, knowing fully well that his death could have been prevented? We highly doubt it. Amber Gonzalez This is Amber Gonzalez, held at Waukesha County Jail for theft. And this is also Gonzalez, slipping through those handcuffs and making her grand escape. September 14, 2018, 30-year-old Amber Gonzalez was arrested after she allegedly took a cell phone from a hotel cleaning cart at the Baymont Inn, Moreland Boulevard. Following that arrest, she was brought to Waukesha Police Station on Delafield Street. 
where police told her that she would need to post bail for an outstanding warrant for an earlier drug paraphernalia citation in August, or else she would have to be transported to the Waukesha County Jail. Inside a holding area at the police station, she was handcuffed to the wall and left alone briefly. Anxious about going to jail and not being able to see her children, Gonzalez slipped out of her handcuffs and tried to open the holding room door, which was locked. She searched around for keys and found a set hanging on a door handle, enabling her to open the door and escape out of that station at about 4.40 p.m., also taking the set of keys with her. Now, here's where things get interesting. Running through backyards into the neighborhood to evade the police, Gonzalez eventually made her way to a tobacco outlet plus groceries convenience store on Pewaukee Road. There she would use her cell phone to call this guy who picked her up in a white SUV. They go together to Baymont Inn, where she engaged in oral sex with him in exchange for 80 bucks. However, Waukesha police had been tipped by both tobacco outlet store employees, who told them that she had been picked up by a man, and Baymont staff, who said Gonzalez had returned to the same hotel she had been arrested for theft earlier that day. When they arrived at that hotel, police saw the 63-year-old man coming out of her room. They confronted him and dismissed his story that the two had met two weeks earlier and had started communicating with each other casually. After rattling his feathers, the man immediately admitted that he and Gonzalez had actually met to engage in an act of prostitution. With that information in hand, police forced open the door and again arrested Gonzalez. This time, she was taken to the Waukesha County Jail, where she was released on a $500 signature bond. Her initial offense, the felony escape charge, carries a max sentence of six years in prison and a $10,000 fine. But lucky for Gonzalez, she was only given two years of probation. Danilo Cavalcante This was the moment convicted murderer Danilo Cavalcante made a daring prison escape through the chimney of a prison facility. Around 9 a.m. on August 31, 2023, Cavalcante escaped from Chester County Prison by chimneying, or crab walking as it's called, between two closed walls in the exercise yard of the prison, making his way up to the roof and maneuvering around the razor wire fencing to escape the prison. This would come just one week after being convicted and sentenced to life in prison for the murder of his ex-girlfriend, Deborah Brandau. For some context here, Cavalcante was accused of murder in his home country of Brazil before he fled to the U.S., meeting and entering a relationship with Deborah in the process. However, at some point, Deborah broke things up and this immensely angered Cavalcante. Not being able to deal with the rejection, he would stalk and murder Deborah in front of her home, stabbing her 38 times until her heart stopped. He was apprehended a few hours later and about two years later was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. But Cavalcante's days of breaking the law were far from over. He got this idea for the escape from a fellow inmate at the Chester County Prison named Igor Bolt, who had used the same method a month earlier. While Igor's escape was short-lived, with him being caught within the first five minutes, Cavalcante broke that record, managing to evade capture for several days. Once Cavalcante was confirmed to be missing, the prison was put on lockdown, and a manhunt ensued. Around an hour after his escape, he was spotted walking on a road around two miles west of the prison. Police would search this area, with multiple tips and potential sightings being reported by residents, with one homeowner claiming Cavalcante was in his house and even stole his food. Around 8 a.m. on the morning of September 13th, almost two weeks after the escape, police discovered Cavalcante sleeping with a rifle he had stolen from a home two nights prior. He attempted to flee by crawling through a thick underbrush, but a police-trained Belgian Malinois subdued him by biting on his head and holding him in place until police arrived. And then, following his capture, a SWAT team transported him to the Penn State Police Barrack, where he's currently being held. What a guy, right? Bridget Harvey Around 1 a.m. on June 7, 2022, a 42-year-old inmate at the Hillsborough County Detention Center, Bridget Harvey, approached Deputy Lillian Jimenez, saying another inmate needed a deputy's assistance. While heading to the women's bathroom to conduct a welfare check on 37-year-old April Colvin, something tragic happened. So, Bridget Harvey was initially booked on charges of home invasion, robbery with a firearm, petty theft, and possession of a controlled substance while Colvin was booked on charges of petty theft, possession of a controlled substance, resisting officer without violence, trespassing, and loitering. Now, these women were no doubt criminals, and they proved this claim once more with Harvey approaching Deputy Jimenez from behind and placing a pillowcase around her neck in an attempt to choke her. As the attack unfolded, other inmates ran to help the deputy, 
The inmates removed the pillowcase from Jimenez's neck and freed her from Harvey's grip until an emergency response team arrived moments later. Jimenez was able to contact the emergency team during that attack, but before they could arrive, Jimenez suffered minor injuries to her neck and throat. The team had placed Harvey in restraints and removed her from the area. She later confessed that she had planned the attack and wanted to use a comb as a shiv that she had sharpened with her teeth to stab Jimenez. Consequently, Harvey was charged with aggravated battery on a law enforcement officer with a weapon, introduction of contraband into a detention facility, and two counts of escape from confinement. As for Colvin, she was charged as a co-conspirator. Tanner Jacobson and Cody Howard Now this prison moment caught on camera is rather amusing than it is terrifying. And that's thanks to the heroic actions of this judge who went to the extreme to bring these criminals to justice. October 16th, 2018, Jacobson and Howard, two inmates facing charges for driving suspended licenses, among other offenses, stood before Judge R.W. Buzzard in court. Now, the judge, in a swift decision, sentenced both to 30 days in jail for their crimes. However, in a sudden turn of events, Cody and Tanner made a daring escape, bolting from the courtroom and dashing through the halls while still in handcuffs. Left with no choice, the judge took off his robe and pursued him. Howard initially took the lead. But as his sandal slipped off, he stumbled and fell in the hallway. Despite this setback, he quickly regained his footing as Jacobson surged ahead. The two fled down many flights of stairs before forcefully opening a fire exit leading outside. Yet Judge Buzzard managed to apprehend Howard before he could make any significant headway. While court deputies nabbed Jacobson just a few blocks away. And you're probably confused as to why they even ran from that courtroom. Well, guess what? We're just as confused ourselves. But when asked why they did this, here's what they had to say. It was just a split second like decision. I don't even know why I did it. Like I would be out of here if I wouldn't have ran. I didn't try to escape to get out. I tried to escape to get well. Looking at what transpired in retrospect, it seems quite funny, but in reality, it's really a mind blowing thing that these two guys could just run out of court with no one stopping them. And big kudos to the judge for his immediate response. But of course, he had to punish them for what they did. From the intended one month in county jail, Cody Howard was given three years imprisonment for first degree trafficking and stolen property, third degree theft, and second degree escape, while Tanner Jacobson was handed a one year sentence for second degree escape. Now, the escape charges leveled against Howard and Jacobson drew international attention after the video of their dramatic escape attempt went viral. Outlets around the world got a hold of this video, making the judge here somewhat of a temporary online celebrity. As he received interview requests from the New York Post, Good Morning America, Inside Edition, and a lot more. What a way to make a name for yourself as the baddest judge on the planet. Kawana Jenkins Also breaking news, a former detention officer with the Fulton County Sheriff's Office has been arrested. 36-year-old Kawana Jenkins is accused of having inappropriate behavior with an inmate. This is Fulton County Detention Officer Kawana Jenkins, involved in some sort of debaucherous act with an inmate. However, the real tragedy of this clip is that it occurred while inside a prison facility. March 22, 2023, female detention officer Kawana Jenkins was arrested over an inappropriate video of hers that went viral on X. Jenkins was seen performing lewd acts on this inmate, and although she faced the full weight of her crime, there's a more disturbing story behind her relationship with this inmate that you should know about. December 2019, Jenkins was employed to work at the Fulton County Sheriff's Office, but after a few months, was transferred to work as a detention officer at the county's jail. But working at the jail was probably the biggest thing she stands to regret, and I'll tell you why. While working there, she met an inmate whose identity wasn't specified. However, later investigations revealed that Jenkins and this inmate had a lengthy relationship while Jenkins actually helped him smuggle a cell phone and other contraband. And it was with that cell phone that she made the incriminating video. So in this video, she's seen sitting in an office inside the facility while the inmate who sat across from her held up the camera while she sucked on his fingers. Then they had a little chit chat before the video abruptly ended. No one knows exactly how the video got on social media, but it did. And it sparked a nationwide controversy among ex-users and even mainstream media around the US. Jenkins' actions were seriously condemned, and in response to the leak, Fulton County Sheriff ordered the raid of the inmate's cell. 
They found the cell phone, but unfortunately for Jenkins, inside that phone was another incriminating video of her kissing the inmate while sitting on his lap. And in that same video, she also handed him designer Cartier eyeglasses. Those things are expensive, adding fuel to her already burning career. Consequently, Jenkins was fired by the Department of Corrections and arrested. She's been convicted of five counts of violating an oath as a public officer, two counts of improper sexual contact as an agent or employee, one count of providing an inmate with a prohibited item without authorization, two counts of cruelty to inmates, and two counts of reckless conduct. And although there isn't any information out there suggesting that she has been sentenced, we can only imagine the lengthy sentence that awaits her. Michael Maldonado 11.40 a.m. March 26, 2018 A 25-year-old man named Michael Maldonado from Portage County in Ohio made an amusing escape after a police deputy left him alone in the backseat of his police car. Now, Michael had been in trouble with the law ever since the age of 12, when he was first referred to juvie court, and efforts to rehabilitate him over the years have failed hopelessly. Michael also violated his juvie supervision and seamlessly entered adult criminal court, amassing 22 arrests, 3 prior felonies, and 9 misdemeanor convictions. Michael here only made headlines when footage of his escape made its way to social media. In the video, a Portage officer had just driven Michael into the jail's enclosed Sally Port. He was taken into custody for resisting law enforcement and possession of a hypodermic needle. However, Michael broke out of that car and dashed under the closing garage door. With the garage door now closed, these officers had to wait for another door to unlock before chasing after him. And by the time they got outside, he was gone. More footage obtained from surveillance cameras caught the exterior shot of Maldonado running away, barefoot and wearing handcuffs. Deputies and officers from neighboring agencies would search the area for about two hours without finding him. He also stole a car to immediately travel out of town. But his plans were shattered when police caught him and took him back to jail. February 2021 Maldonado was sentenced to 20 years in prison as punishment for more than a dozen drug-related violations and crimes of violence, including this botched escape. Benjamin Hudden Barbo March 17, 2013 marked the day this daring escape was caught on camera from the top of a prison facility in St. Jerome, northwest of Montreal. On that day, two men working for Hudden Barbo, Billy Boudon and Stephen Mathau Marchisio, hired a helicopter pilot for what they falsely claimed would be a sightseeing ride through the Laurentians in Quebec, Canada. But after the helicopter took off, Mauricio pointed a gun to the head of that pilot, ordering him to land on the roof of that detention center where Hud and Barbo and a fellow inmate, Danny Prevenkel, were waiting. For context, Benjamin was a member of the ruthless Hells Angels motorcycle gang and a notorious serial killer convicted of many murders, while Danny was serving seven years and ten months for various offenses, including arson, forcible confinement, and unauthorized possession of a firearm. Now, no one knows how Ben really planned the escape with his men on the outside, but it is one for the record books. When that pilot landed on top of that roof, a rope was released for Ben and Danny to scale up with. However, after continuously slipping down the rope, the helicopter pilot then tried to pull him clear by starting the chopper. But that also didn't work. It took him an entire six minutes and many failed attempts before that chopper took off, with both inmates dangling from the rope, making their grand escape. And if you're wondering why in all those minutes no corrections officers could attempt to stop him, well, according to reports from the union that represents the prison guards, the correction officers on duty had no guns to confront the armed accomplices, and so they had no option but to watch the drama unfold through their security cameras. But as crazy as that escape was, it was all in vain. After the chopper landed, Hudden Barbo and his team made their way to a getaway vehicle. However, a few hours later, Mauricio and Hudden Barbo were tracked by the Surete du Quebec to a residence in Chertsey and were arrested after a shootout with police. But Doan and the other detainee who escaped, Danny Prevenkel, were also arrested shortly after the breakout. November 17, 2018, a jury at the courthouse in St. Jerome found Hudden Barbo guilty of first degree murder of Pierre Paul Fortier and the second degree murder of Frederick Murdoch. He was also found guilty for the attempted murder of Vincent Petritonio and another man who cannot be identified because of a publication ban. In total, Benjamin was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole after 25 years. And due to this applaudable prison escape attempt, he's now held at a high security facility in Riviere de Praí, where he's kept in his cell for 20 hours a day and isn't allowed any contact with other inmates. 
Serena Dotson. Easy. New video tonight shows three inmates casually walking away from a New Mexico jail last month. It led authorities on a five day manhunt before the inmates were finally captured. June 15th, 2018, Curry County detention inmates Aaron Clark, Victor Apodaca, and Ricky Senna escaped from the outdoor recreation area of this detention center through three secured doors. And detention officer Serena Dotson, who worked at the control desk, was responsible for unlocking those doors. Another video showed the three inmates walking casually behind an alley as they made their escape. But the real shocker to this story was when investigators uncovered footage from the facility's control room, showing Serena Dotson alone while looking distressed over what she had done. June 19, 2018, Serena was arrested in Lubbock, more than 100 miles southeast of that jail. While on the other hand, those three inmates were at large for almost a week before they were apprehended during a standoff with Clovis police. To her luck though, the judge presiding over her case accepted her attorney's request that Dodson undergo a 60-day diagnostic evaluation in the Department of Corrections before she was sentenced. And if you're wondering what the hell that is, well, let's just say it's a way for the court to know the mental state of the defendant. For Dodson, her attorney claimed her involvement in the June 15th escape was an out-of-character incident. And since she faced anywhere from probation to over 10 years in prison, a 60-day diagnostic seemed about right. But let's just say it didn't play out in her favor. She accepted a plea agreement with three counts of third-degree felony, assisting escape, and one fourth-degree felony county of bringing contraband into jail. She was sentenced to 10 and a half years in prison and 18 months of supervised probation. Joe Sape and Willie Ames Driver June 4, 2018 Two inmates, 38-year-old Shane Joe Sape and 24-year-old Willie Ames Driver, were throwing out trash under the careful watch of a supervisor when they suddenly sprinted off the prison lawn and successfully escaped Houston County Jail. April 2018, one of them, Sape, was arrested for many burglaries in various counties across Texas. While on parole for previous burglary convictions, he'd served about three years of a 20-year sentence before being granted parole. However, he faced the possibility of having his entire sentence reinstated if his parole was revoked at an upcoming hearing, along with additional prison time if convicted of his April 2018 charges. Now, the other inmate, Willie Driver, was held on a felony charge of identity fraud, as well as misdemeanor charges of obstruction and driving without a license. On the day of the incident, these two inmates were taking out the trash around 8 p.m. After getting rid of the garbage, they turned a corner around a giant dumpster, briefly out of view from their supervisor. At that moment, they made a break for it, running at high speed simultaneously. An outdoor camera captured the two sprinting across the open prison lawn towards a wooded area before disappearing. In response, a search team comprising of 50 officers were deployed to locate the inmates, aided by K-9 units. Initially, all they really found were their green inmate jumpsuits and boots, indicating that the two had shed their clothing to their underwear in a frantic escape. However, Driver was swiftly apprehended after he sought refuge in a nearby apartment complex and requested to use a resident's phone. He was arrested in his underwear and socks. Sape, on the other hand, faced a more challenging situation. Allegedly, he broke into some woman's apartment within the complex to conceal himself before being discovered and arrested three miles away from the jail. At the time of his arrest, he was exhausted and had sustained several cuts from running through the woods. Now these two are facing charges of conspiracy to commit a crime and escape, adding more years behind bars to their already troubled fate. Curtis Williams now this might just be the most bizarre footage ever caught within a prison. March 27, 2021, 34-year-old Curtis Williams and two other accomplices started a riot at the Oklahoma County Detention Center and eventually took a jailer, Daniel Mesquez, hostage. Williams was incarcerated for convictions related to rape and gun possession charges. The chaos broke out after inmates complained about conditions at the jail, alleging they had no running water and weren't being fed. Next thing you know, two inmates, one of them being Williams, decided to live stream the entire hostage situation as other prisoners came out of their cells to destroy property. Misquez was particularly dealt with during this chaos. This guy was beaten and stabbed multiple times with a makeshift knife before being laid on the table for other inmates to attack. Authorities were alerted to this situation after social media users watching this live stream called emergency services. And when a team of officers arrived at the facility, they shot and killed Curtis Williams as he stood at the top of a landing, holding his knife to Mesquez's neck. 
After he was shot, Mesquez tumbled down the staircase and officers pulled him to safety. He was rushed to the hospital and treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Conversely, Williams was the fifth inmate in 2021 to die at that jail, which had a long history of high staff turnover, overcrowding, and escapes. It was the worst place to be sent as a jailer, and Mesquez got a first-hand experience of what that felt like. Although Williams was believed to be in the wrong, authorities claimed that the two officers who shot at him were the ones in the wrong, and as a consequence, they were sent on administrative leave. Now, there's a lot of other stuff associated with this story, but the point is, these inmates turned their prison unit into a war zone and turned Officer Mesquez into a punching bag while live streaming everything. It's definitely not something you get to see every day. Tori T. Smith November 2009 31-year-old New Orleans woman Tori Smith pulled a classic Hollywood-type stunt by breaking out of the central jail without anyone noticing. Smith was brought into the jail about two hours before her escape. She was in the process of being booked with aggravated battery in connection with an incident involving her boyfriend. In the process, an unidentified New Orleans police officer failed to lock two doors that led to the jail's central lockup holding area. That officer had booked another suspect about 45 minutes earlier and was trying to quickly retrieve an affidavit he had left with the jail paperwork. In the tape, which shows the room just outside the jail where officers transfer custody of people they arrest to jail deputies, the officer can be seen entering the facility and holding the outside door behind him and slowly closing it. Now, the officer didn't fully close the door and prevented the locking mechanism from engaging. The officer did the same thing with the interior door, and about a minute later, Smith, who had told jail workers she was going to the bathroom, can be seen approaching a door leading to the transfer room. She pushed that door open, walked right through, and quickly pushed open the outside door of the jail. Running down the 2800 block of Perdido Street, Smith can be seen beginning to scale an outside fence. The rest of the breakout was obscured in the video until after Smith was over the fence and running down the street. A nurse who works at the jail saw Smith climbing the fence and, consequently, she alerted deputies. Unfortunately for Smith, her freedom was short-lived, as she was apprehended at the Huntington Park Apartments on Crowder Boulevard the following day. She was then rebooked into jail on the battery charge, as well as an additional simple escape charge. And while these moments are quite shocking, they are a stark reminder of the unpredictable and untamed world that exists behind the four corners of almost every prison facility around the world.